Good evening. I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. On Sunday afternoon, Max Anderson and Will Walsh were named on the all-conference tournament team following the Big Ten baseball tournament in Omaha last week. Max batted 444 in the tournament with a conference high, eight hits in four games. In his four for five hitting performance against Michigan State on Friday, Anderson became the first player in college baseball to hit the 100 hit mark on the season. On the mound, Walsh tallied a 2-0 record through 10 and two-thirds innings with a zero ERA, including a complete game, four-hit shutout against the Spartans. Walsh became the first Nebraska pitcher to throw a complete game shutout in a Big Ten conference tournament. Keeping with the diamond sport, pitchers Jake Buns and CJ Hood have entered the transfer portal following the conclusion of the 2023 season. Late this afternoon, Nebraska Athletics announced that approximately 8,000 more tickets will go on sale to the general public regarding the August 30th Volleyball Day in, uh, in Nebraska event in Memorial Stadium. Tickets will be available on Thursday, June 1st at 10 a.m. through the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office. More information can be found on Huskers.com. On Sunday, Taylor Christopoulos of the Nebraska men's gym team helped Team USA secure a gold medal and grab a first place finish at the Pan American Championships in Columbia. Christopoulos finished with the highest vault score for Team USA and earned team points in several other events. Checking out a few live scores from Major League Baseball, only two in action, the Padres and the Marlins are knotted at zero in the second, and the Rangers lead the Tigers one, no, uh, one to nothing in the second. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now get ready for a full two hours of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich, long count, turns, gives it off to Gabe Irvin, left side. Gabe stiff arms a man, is in the end zone for a touchdown off the left end. Good. That was a gold star stiff arm by 22 to 5 Pater. And the White extends their lead to 12 0. Two on the play clock. Mertz lifts the leg, gets his shotgun snap, back to throw, has some time, rolling out, steps, throws downfield. The pass is going to be intercepted. Malcolm Hartsog at the 45 to midfield, down the far sideline, inside the Badger 40 to the 38 yard line. Mal- Welcome Hartsog's third pick of the year. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, and welcome. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday weekend. What a great kickoff to summer, and, and what a weekend for all of us to reflect, remember, uh, honor those that, that have fought for our country. I was driving up to my church on Sunday, and the, the property was lined with American flags, and it, boy, just... Kind of took my breath away for a little bit. So I hope you had a chance to get out. I know that a lot of you probably went to cemeteries, decorated graves over the weekend, but I hope you had a great weekend. It's a wonderful kickoff to the summer months here around uh, Nebraska. Great to have you with us. Uh, Best of show last night. Jessica's on vacation this week, so you're stuck with me for the next couple of days. We have so much to get to tonight. Um, A lot has happened since we had our last show, which was... Wednesday night, right? Yeah, after the uh, Husker baseball game that day, we had Husker baseball Thursday and Friday. So let's start there. Husker baseball season came to an end. Three feet shy of a victory. Max Anderson hit one to the wall in in right field with two aboard in the bottom of the ninth against Maryland on Saturday. Huskers were down four to two. A few more feet. That goes in the bullpen. Huskers would have walked off Maryland. And I kept saying, I know I've said it, a handful of times over the last couple of weeks in Nebraska's season, and they played 57 games, they didn't walk anybody off. They did not have a walk-off win. And that is almost when you're pretty good. Nebraska had a pretty good team. Not a great, pretty good. Obviously, they were really good. They'd have been in the NCAA tournament, but they weren't. Usually, you get one or two of those a year where you walk them off and big celebration in the middle of night. Nebraska didn't have that at all season long. And as that ball was in flight toward the right field fence, I thought to myself, it's got to happen, right? It's got to happen right here. Uh, But it didn't. And Nebraska's season was over at that very moment. And congrats to Maryland. 
what a year for them. Uh, winning the regular season and then turning around and winning the tournament title, good for them. We'll talk about the reward that the NC, the reward of I'm doing air quotes for them. Uh, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But I, I want to talk the Husker baseball team. And Ben's going to be with us here in a little bit and get his thoughts as we put a bow in the 2023 season. This team statistically was very, very good. And yet record-wise, only okay. 33-23-1, the final record. Ten games over 500. Not an awful year at all. But it could have been so much more. And the frustrating part is this team was good enough, I believe, to be in the NCAA tournament, which starts on Friday at 16 different sites around the country. And there's got to be reflection that's going to have to take place on why they came up short. And they, they will do that. The, the coaches will do a deep dive. Um, there'll be changes. In fact, there are some already that have happened today. Exit meetings started today. We'll go tomorrow. You're going to hear a lot of news about Husker baseball. Cole had a little bit of it in the ticker. And so it's going to happen. And Nebraska is going to be active in the portal to replace a lot of guys. The, the biggest departures today, Jake Buns has decided to enter the portal. Yeah, Jake has one more year left. I know he, he started at a junior college, came to Nebraska, but the COVID year and he had a medical hardship, he's going to have one more year of eligibility left. He has decided to go try to play somewhere else. The blow that we just heard about 30 minutes ago is that Corbin Hawkins is retiring from baseball. Corbin is an engineering student. He's got an internship lined up next year. He is ready to dive into that and hang up the cleats. And, and that happens. And, and I, you, know, I don't, you know, put yourself in these kids' position. That baseball team works out a lot of the year, and so is the football team, a lot of the year at 6 a.m. Workouts, then go to class, then have practice. It's a lot of 6 a.m.s. And if you're kind of ready to close that chapter and move on, and finish your schooling and get a job. I, I can't stop anybody from wanting to do that. And so for Corbin Hawkins, God bless you. What a year he had. He was really Nebraska's most effective reliever for a good chunk of the year. So reliable. Such a different delivery, a different look for teams to get. And Nebraska picked their spots when to use him. And he was incredibly effective. And also a really fun guy to be around. He was one of the funnest guys on that team that I'd like to be around. So Corbin Hawkins... Retiring, not entering the portal, not looking to play somewhere else, ready to move on to the next chapter of his life. He put a post up about 30 minutes ago on social media that if you are into that, want to go look that up, you can go find that as well. Jake Bunzo also moving on. And C.J. Hood announced last week during the tournament, he was not a part of the tournament roster, that he was moving on as well. So, And there's more to come. This isn't it. Again, uh, these meetings took him, taking place today and tomorrow. We're going to hear more roster movement. There's also a lot of guys in that transfer portal that Nebraska, well, I think, would fit really nicely for the Huskers moving forward. And you think about what Nebraska did 12 months ago in the transfer portal. Jace Kaminska, Casey Burnham, Charlie Fisher, uh, Jaden Broombaugh, who got hurt this year and we didn't see him play, but he's going to be a big part of the team next year, uh, was a transfer portal addition for the Cornhuskers. So, Nebraska will do that. They'll get in there. They'll, they'll get busy. They'll find, try to find guys. I'm sure Nebraska's phone has been ringing from people recommending someone to the Oscar coaching staff. So, uh, you know, I, 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 think it's, it's, I think it's just kind of the day and age, right? I mean, we had Fred Hoiberg on the program a couple weeks ago and look at, look at the transformation for the basketball roster. Yeah, there are six or seven guys back, but there are six or seven new players that are part of the Oscar Bass. It's just the way college sports is. I don't necessarily love it, but that's kind of the way things are going. So it's going to be a hectic couple of days. We'll keep you posted as best we can as we move on. Uh, but that's just the way things are in college sports right now. And uh, some of it will make sense. Some of it you'll scratch your head. Some of it you'll wonder, is there a villain in this whole thing? And in most cases, that's not really the case. There's really not a villain in a lot of these cases. It's the it's just the way it is. Sometimes somebody, a different Vantage point might be going. I mean, why did Jace Kaminska? And I know Wichita State was going through an upheaval in their coaching staff, and Jace bolted. Uh, that's part of the reason some guys want to come back closer to home and finish it out, like Sam Griesel did for the basketball team. So everybody's got different reasons to go, but uh, it's it's um, 
It's just kind of the way the world is in college sports right now. We'll keep you posted on the ins and outs of that in, in the coming days and weeks. All right, so I mentioned Maryland wins a tournament, wins a regular season. That's a heck of a team. They really are. Their reward by the NCAA committee when the selection show was announced yesterday was, okay, we, we're going to put the Big Ten champion, regular season and tournament, in the same regional with the number one team in the country in Wake Forest. <laughs> Wake Forest is the overall number one seed. Oh, boy, where does that sound familiar? Oh, yeah, that happened to the Huskers two years ago. Nebraska won the league by three and a half games. And their reward, ah, let's keep them close to home so they can bust. Let's send them to Fayetteville. Oh, yeah, the Arkansas Razorbacks, the number one overall seed in the tournament. So it, it's so frustrating to watch these shows and the Big Ten kind of get treated. And I'm not trying to say the Big Ten's a great league. I think their RPI this year was six. There's that dirty word to me, the RPI. And, and to me, the committee solely went off that RPI index. I mean, you're telling me eight SEC teams deserve to be host? You're telling me Auburn deserves to host? South Carolina deserves to host? Kentucky? Kentucky had a decent year. Did you hear about them? Cole, did you hear about this story? Kentucky's going to host. But there's a big music festival in Lexington, Kentucky. There's no hotel space. So they're going to put the teams up on campus in the dorms. That's where the visiting teams at the Kentucky Regional and Indiana's going there. They're going to have to stay in dorms for the regional. Shouldn't you have to have adequate hotel space to host a regional? Shouldn't that be part of your bid? And yeah, these, these people still have to put bids in whether they want to host or not. And so Kentucky's hosting, they have no room for the teams, let alone the fans. The fans are going to stay over an hour away to drive into Lexington to watch and root their teams on. Again, Indiana is part of that regional. But here's Maryland, the champ, both postseason and regular season. And, and I'm not saying they should have hosted. Probably not. I don't know if they had a great enough, good enough overall resume to host. But their reward is to go to that regional and Iowa, who finished third in the regular season, finished runners-up to Maryland in the tournament, they get to go to Terre Haute. They get to go play at Indiana State's regional. And Indiana State's the 13 or 14 overall number one seed. I think Iowa's going to win the regional. I really do. I think Maryland's going to have a hard time. That Wake Forest pitching staff's tremendous. They have three outstanding starters. There's a reason they're the number one overall seed. But if I'm Maryland, I'm scratching my head going, wait a minute, we just won the Big Ten – and we, may, we get the worst draw of the three teams of the Big Ten that are in the tournament. We have to go to the number one. Same thing happened in Nebraska, folks, two years ago. We were the best team in the league, and we got sent to the number one overall seed. There, there's so many things about the RPI. That we, Jessica and I touched on this two weeks ago, and a softball numbers came out. Although I will say softball's turned out pretty chalky. I mean, you go look at the eight teams that made it to Oklahoma City, pretty darn chalky. The only big upset that that field got – was UCLA getting bounced in their home regional, which has allowed Utah to get in there at the 15 seed. And you have an unseeded Oregon team that, that uh, made their way through. Now, did Oregon get to the women's row? I don't know. Getting off track here. But it's just it's so frustrating. I know Kansas State fans are hot, should be. They got left out. They took Oklahoma over K-State, even though K-State won the series from the Sooners, finished ahead of them in the league standings, went further in the league tournament. But they went almost strictly with the RPI. And that's, that's crazy. That that's, their total decision making is on that. It's the lazy way out. It's the committee not wanting to offend people. And it's the committee not wanting to try to justify picking somebody that might have two spots lower in the RPI over somebody else. But sometimes logic, eyeball test, all that needs to be factored into it. College baseball needs some help in cleaning up their postseason, same thing for college softball. All right, there's my rant on that. I wish all the Big Ten teams good luck. I do think Iowa can win that regional. Indiana, I think, can punch their way around in the Kentucky regional. I love Maryland's team. They beat the Huskers four out of five times, but they're going to have a hard, hard time with that Wake Forest team. They are really, really good. All right. Uh, ben McLaughlin's going to be with us here in a couple of minutes. Uh, get his thoughts about Husker baseball, his thoughts about why this season maybe didn't go as far as it should have, could have. We'll get into some of that topics with him. Hour number two, the Husker volleyball team has departed for their over 
They're uh, at a at a country trip to Brazil. They left last night from Omaha. They're in Sao Paulo today. They start playing games in a couple of days. Before they left, though, Lauren Cook, John Cook, sat down for another edition of the Kicking Back with the Cooks podcast. We'll play a good chunk of that coming up in our number two of the program as well. 402-413-2400. That's number to be a part of the show with a call or a text. We're going to have a great time with you all tonight. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Ben will join the show. We'll talk some Husker baseball next. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. UNL is the only Big Ten university in Nebraska, part of the only conference with an academic alliance. Being in the Big Ten means superior academics, unique student opportunities, better resources, and world-class research programs. With 72% of undergraduate students receiving scholarships or financial aid, UNL offers a Big Ten education at great value. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe, think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Save time and shop online with Woodhouse. Easily discover your next vehicle while shopping for a new or new to you car, truck, or SUV. Woodhouse has something for everyone, offering 19 of the top name brands in new and an extensive pre-owned inventory. You're guaranteed to find that spacious, family-friendly SUV or that get-any-job-done truck. So get started today at woodhouse.com. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. 
Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan, the here for laundry 20-year loan, and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe healthcare should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It is a Tuesday night sports on it. Off last night with the Memorial Day weekend, Husker baseball wrapped up uh, on Saturday afternoon at Charles Schwab Field with the 4-2 loss to the Maryland Terrapins, who went on Sunday to go win the uh, conference tournament. Joined now by my broadcast partner in Husker Baseball, Ben McLaughlin. Well, we've given you a couple days to kind of digest what the, the last several months have been like. What, what, what's been on your, in your thought process the last 72 hours? Yeah, yeah, honestly, a lot. Um, you know, I felt leaving the ballpark uh, the other day that uh, it was a great way to end a year. If you're ever going to end a year, that was a good way to do it. Um, you know, flying out to the warning track in right field by six feet, missing a walk-off home run. You know, a moment that we were just kind of starving for all year. Um, no better way to, to end a, a career for Max Anderson. Uh, if there was anybody that was going to provide that moment, it would have been him. Uh, but so I, I felt a little bit, you know, kind of at peace, um, you know, on Sunday. Uh, and then Monday, when the selection show rolled around, it, it's just really difficult not hearing your name. It's really difficult not seeing uh, Nebraska's name pop on the screen, to be diving into teams I'm unfamiliar with, uh, numbers today and, and the week, you know, getting myself prepared for uh, a, maybe a place I haven't been before, and, and playing in a regional. You know, that's what it's all about. That's that's what that's why we do this. That's why the, the coaches coach. That's why the players play. And to not make that goal is, is difficult. And I think Nebraska kind of knew what it was going to take to continue their season, to win the Big Ten tournament. They gave it a, a valiant effort. You know, they were one of the, the last three teams in that tournament. But that's not number one. And, and that's where we're at right now. And some difficult conversations are happening as we speak with this team moving forward. Why do you think it fell short? I mean, we offensively, with Matthews and Anderson, two of the best seasons in Husker history, and yet it wasn't enough. And, and at times the pitching was pretty good. Where, In your mind, where do you think it kind of fell short? I think it fell short with relying on the home run. And as fun as this season was to call offensively, I mean, you and I both had some big home run calls this year with big swings, game-changing swings. Uh, I mean, look no further than the Rutgers game, right? I mean, I think you had a three-run homer and I had a three-run homer, and Nebraska ended up winning the game. Uh, but I think they, they relied on the long one too much offensively. And that really comes back to bite you because even though you may hit uh, 85, 90, 100 homers in a year, you can't really predict, you know, the stability of a home run. Um, you know, you may get five one game and you may get zero your next three. This team had multiple runs of double-digit home run streaks this year, which was phenomenal. It's a really difficult feat to have. But I think I would have traded 15 to 20 to 25 of those homers for 50 or 60 more RBIs, you know, big hits with guys and running runners in scoring position. Um, so I think falling in love with the home run offensively, although it provided us some gaudy offensive statistics, uh, I think it, it, you know, hitting is, is really inconsistent and, and Nebraska learned that lesson. And so with that, 
the pitching fell short this year, in my opinion. Um, you know, Emmett Olsen and Jace Kamensko started the year as good of a Friday Saturday duo as I think better than we could have expected. But as they tapered off, so did Nebraska's season. And the instability on Sundays was well documented, you know, for the first two and a half to three months of the season. You know, Will Walsh kind of came in and, and provided some stability there, um, you know, at times. But, you know, for the most part, I think the lesson learned this year is, yes, home runs are great. They're fun. They're exciting. But they're not going to get you to a regional. You need that coupled with something else, whether it be more tenacity on the bases, whether it be, as we saw late in the season, more small ball. Um, they needed to pair the home runs with something else, and they really needed to bolster the pitching depth, uh, you know, for the end of the season. I think they had a lot of adequate guys, but not a lot of killers and not a lot of guys that when you handed the ball to, you were confident they were going to go shut the door. Ben McLaughlin with us. We're recapping the Oscar baseball season. Crypto King said, please tell Benny, sure made the season so much more exciting, his baseball knowledge off the hooks. The pitching... And when you can't find that Sunday starter, that certainly then bleeds into the midweek games, Ben. And the midweek games were a puzzle. Huskers played 12 of them. They went 6-6. Six and six. And those were some RPI killers in those six losses that really took Nebraska down to a level where they had no choice late in the season but to try to win the tournament in Omaha to get in the NCAA tournament. How about attacking the midweek? What can the staff do in the offseason to try to correct and turn that around for 2024? It just can't happen, you know. It, when you play in the Big Ten and every one of those games hurts you tremendously that you don't win and you have five or six of them, can really bury your season. And I think Nebraska learned that lesson this year as well. You know, when you're in LSU or a Florida uh, or a, a Texas A&M and you, and you lose to a lesser in-state team, it becomes easier to stomach when your league RPI is going to naturally balance that out. You don't get that in the Big Ten. In fact, it's the opposite. It's a heightened importance on those midweek games. I know for the fans, it might not be as juicy of a matchup unless you're playing Creighton, but when Nebraska loses to South Dakota State and they lose to North Dakota State and they lose to Omaha and they lose to Creighton, those losses matter and they really hurt your resume. And I think that's why, you know, in the last month of the season, we knew Nebraska needed to win the Big Ten tournament to get in because Nebraska's RPI was in an unrecoverable state. And and that's why, you know, the, the midweeks are that important. So what can the coaches do to combat that? You need to build depth. You need to build, uh, you need to build a, a situation and a roster that can go compete on those days. But most of all, you know, you need to build depth, not from just a pitching standpoint, but from an offensive standpoint as well, to get those some of those guys off their feet. So Bryce Matthews isn't having to, you know, have five at bats every single game. Max Anderson isn't having to do all that. You know, you save reps on those guys. You save torque on the body. You save um, some innings. You save all that stuff for the end of the season to where you're not having to rest Bryce Matthews in the Purdue series and battle through a back injury in the Big Ten tournament. Now, injuries are, can also be a fluke thing. I'm not suggesting that, you know, if, if guys play every game, they're going to get hurt and they're going to wear out. But it certainly helps when you have, you know, depth behind those guys and uh, can give other guys opportunities and feel good about what they can do. And the pitching depth, you know, is absolutely necessary and key. Nebraska's best teams in years past have been those that have a consistent midweek starter that not only has the role, but constantly produces when the team asks them to. And and you feel good about Nebraska's chances on a Tuesday and a Wednesday against a, an inferior in-state foe. But that, that, I think, was the toughest lesson. I think you would agree, Greg. The toughest lesson the 2023 Huskers learned, if you don't bring it in the midweek games, it will bury your record. And for those returning players next year, let's hope it's a lesson that they've learned and we're not talking about this again. Yeah, and the other thing about the RPI is kind of out of your control. You schedule San Diego early. They didn't have as good a year as they thought they were going to have. You go to South Alabama. They are traditionally a really good team in their league. 
they didn't have the year that, that you thought they might have. Now, you can't control that. You put that on the schedule. You think those are going to be good for you. It's a bit of a flip of the coin. You have to go south to get games in early. You try to pick places that you think will help you, and those two didn't. That also hurt. John in Kansas says, I don't understand why we didn't use Jake Buns more. He pitched in 15 games, only gave up runs in three. Jake has entered the transfer portal. Your thoughts about Jake and, and maybe at one point, I know we, we had a stat. I'm not sure we even use it on the air, but his – amount of inherited runners that scored was through the roof. So it didn't go to his ERA. It went to the guy that he came in for. But your thoughts about maybe the lack of use of Buns? Well, you have to understand that Jake Buns was basically off the table for the first, you know, month, month and a half of the season. Um, I think the, you know, the coaches were really careful with him coming back from the arm surgery and and limit limit his his ability going forward you got to understand the the 2021 version of jake buns that we all saw uh basically every time he was out there was 93 94 with a hammer breaking ball that was the pitcher that he was you know just the electric stuff um the problem was post arm surgery that wasn't the pitcher that the new jake oh i think we've Got disconnected from Ben, so see if we can get him back. Talking and recapping Husker baseball uh, with Ben McLaughlin. Husker season came to an end on Saturday. The 4-2 loss to the Maryland Terrapins. Nebraska ends up going 33-23. And that uh, wretched tie that happened to him that opening week of the season against uh, the Maryland Terrapins. We'll take a break, see if we can get Ben reestablished. Time to tell you to buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back to talk more Husker Baseball next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? Your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet? Or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart, on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five-cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your hy pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at hy V. hy V makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local hy V pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling. His favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS. 
When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places based on manufacturer estimates CY2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. We're talking Husker baseball, putting a bow on the 2023 season with Ben McLaughlin. And we're talking about uh, Jake Buns and the pitching and, and some of the inconsistencies there. So now, now we're into transfer portal season, and I'm, I was seeing names popping up all over the place today. We've got some names for the Huskers. What, what are the steps the coaches take? Where, where do they go? What, what are some of the bigger needs in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, I think it immediately starts with the pitching staff. Um, and I think you've got you've to find a way to build a team that way. You know, hit, hitting the, the long ball was great, and, and I think you, you gladly accept that. But you're not going to be able to just replace a Max Anderson and a Bryce Matthews. So I think you need to start figuring out what the 2024 version is of the Nebraska Cornhusker baseball team is going to look like. And I think the one consistency that you you have out there with, with a good pitching staff is, you know, you, you know what you're going to get and you can win the three to two game. You can win the, the two to one game. You know, you have reliable options in the bullpen and not, you know, spinning the wheel of, of guys that either may be unavailable or, or going through a rough patch. You have more than one option out there. Um, and you're not relying on Corbin Hawkins and Shea Shanneman every single game to get you out of messes. So I think that's where you start. You know, the, the way it works is they've got this giant database, and, and with the, all the technology these days, these coaches have the ability to, to sort and funnel through, you know, any type of criteria you're looking for. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, lefty, righty, high velocity, four-pitch guy, uh, GPA, any any type of criteria that they want, they can basically filter out this database and see what what yields the result. And so that, that's a tremendous help to have that, but you also have to do your due diligence to find the right culture fit because Will Bolt you know, is very high on that. You look at the guys that they brought in this year from the portal, how well they fit. Casey Burnham, Charlie Fisher, uh, no, some, of the, some of those guys that came in and just right away fit in and meshed with the team. And, and I think that's where you start. You've got to go find a way to, to bolster the, uh, the pitching staff, it, both starters, relievers, midweek guys, all of it, and, and get yourself set up there. Um, and there will be no shortage of names in that portal, as we know. Also, a lot of guys are departing to go play some summer ball. Who, who needs – who on this team will, will you be tracking to kind of see if there's progress being made, whether it's a position player or just guys on the mound that maybe need to take a step forward? 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a handful. You know, I think there's another guy, a crop of guys that I have my eye on. And, and I think my first answer was another guy that uh, was was maybe number one on my list last year, and that's Josh Karen. You know, Josh is a guy that's going to have to come in and take another big step forward this year, um, you know, and look to have some of that offensive production back from, from Bryce and, and from Max. Um, you know, I think we're, we're more than confident and comfortable with what we've seen from some of the younger players. Dylan Carey, another guy that I just want to go see pitch and pitch a ton is Caleb Clark. You know, this is a young man that just did not have, quite frankly, a very good freshman season. But you ask him, you ask the coaches, uh, neither one of those parties have lost faith in the ceiling of Caleb Clark. And I think if he can go be successful, learn how to pitch a little bit more, um, that, that's going to be hoop Nebraska big time, you know, come next springtime. Um, and I think, you know, you can throw in, you know, a handful of those younger guys too that just didn't get, you know, the, the looks or the playing time that you, that you need to get. Another guy that just needs to get baseball action is Caden Brumbaugh. You know, this coaching staff was really high on him before he tore up the shoulder, you know, right before the season started. This was going to be a key cog in Nebraska's outfield this year uh, before that injury. So he needs to get back. Uh, obviously you want to, you know, take, take care of that with kid gloves and get himself ready for next year. But, you know, those are kind of the, the first names that are top of mind of guys that just need to go either pitch or get a whole bunch of at bats. All right. Last thing I kind of went on a bit of a rant in the opening segment about, you know, Maryland wins the league, wins the tournament and oh yeah, your reward is we're going to put you in the same regional with the number one team in the country. That happened to us, the Huskers two years ago, win the league by three and a half games. And oh, your reward is go play in Arkansas with the number one team. And we, we even went down there going, I think there's a handful of regionals we could probably win. This is going to be really hard. Not that Nebraska didn't give it the old college try, and they certainly pushed the Razorbacks deep into that game on Monday night. But there were some other regionals. I think Nebraska could have gone and won. How about that? And is, you know, is it ludicrous that we're at this point now where we're just trying to place teams because it's geographically makes sense to stick them in a place where we can bust them? Yes, that's absolutely ludicrous. At the day and age of NIL and money and conference money and all that, that shouldn't be what the NCAA is worried about. And I know the NCAA is the one that, uh, you know, runs this. Uh, it's just they've got to be better. And, and the problem is, and I, I, think, I think the first solution is an easy one, you, you've got to seed them one through 64. That, that's the first and easiest solution. You don't just pick the top 16 – and then have a bunch of what I call filler teams. Um, it, it, they can't happen that way. You know, it just absolutely can't. I think, you know, we're at the day and age where travel shouldn't be top of mind when it comes to this. It needs to be bona fide criteria and not criteria that um, is lazy or criteria that, uh, you know, it, does, it, it needs to be more than just the RPI. I guess what I'm getting at. Um, you know, it's an imperfect system. But I think the first thing the committee can do is seed all 64 teams out and, and place them in the regionals that way. And, and let's go from there. You know, it sh I shouldn't be able to sit on my laptop on Sunday night and predict 61 of the 64 teams and nail, you know, the two, three matchups in like eight or nine regionals. That happened this year. Like, I like college baseball. I follow it. But if I can sit there in two hours on my laptop and do what the committee's doing all year, don't you see the problem with that? Like, it, there needs to be more that's put into it than, oh, uh, Louisiana, they're, they're a bubble team. They're last four, and let's stick them in Baton Rouge. Or uh, Oral Roberts, let's stick them in Stillwater. You know what I mean? It's just it, it's taking the easy way out. It's lazy. And, you know, honestly, it's a disservice to college baseball. And ultimately, it's a disservice to the Big Ten. And oh, you know what, what our fans need to realize is it's never going to change. If the Big Ten hasn't changed their reputation by now, this is what it's going to be moving forward. The Big Ten are always going to be these filler teams unless one team or two comes out of the woodwork and has a top 10 caliber year. Otherwise, this is what we're going to get year over year, and we're just going to have to deal with it because I don't get the sense from the committee listening to their chairs year after year that they're into any kind of major change when it comes to – how, how the, the regionals are selected. Might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I don't think there's anybody from the Big Ten on the, on the committee, and that's wrong, too. Somebody from the Big Ten needs to – the Big Ten needs to insist on having somebody representing their league 
on this committee uh, moving forward. All right, uh, I think Iowa's got a shot. You with me? Do you like any of the Big Ten teams getting out of the first weekend? Well, I hate Maryland's chances. I mean, Wake Forest, they're as good of a college baseball team as I can remember. Like, they, they would go toe-to-toe if not be better than that 21 Arkansas team. Their starting rotations numbers, all three of those guys, are absolutely stupid. I mean, those all three of those guys – are unbelievable. They have two big thumpers in their lineup. It's a terrible matchup for Maryland. Uh, I don't see them even challenging the Deeks. Of, of all of the other two Big Ten teams, Iowa has by far the best chance just because of their pitching depth. I said that leaving Iowa City. This team is going to be a problem in a regional. Not only are they going to be a problem, but I think they got a pretty good one. I, I think landing in Terre Haute is as good of a spot as you could have hoped for if you're a Hawkeye fan. I think there's going to be a lot of black and gold there. I think they're red hot. I think they're one of the hottest teams in the country. And, you know, I think the Vegas odds are that the Iowa wins that region. I, I really do. They're a pitching team built around pitching, and their offense is really hot. I know they didn't win against Maryland, but um, I think the Hawkeyes have more than a, a good chance. I, I, in fact, I, I would be a little surprised if they don't come out of there. All right. Good stuff. Great year by you, and enjoy your summer, and we'll get, uh, get you ready for Husker game day here in about three months. Sounds great. Get a little R and R, and then you're right. We're back at it with uh, with Big Red football, heading to the the Twin Cities, and uh and a non Saturday game. How about that? Another another early kickoff for the Huskers. But I'll be ready. But you better believe I'm gonna enjoy a little time off after uh, the grind since February. You've earned it. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, guys. Ben McLaughlin joining us on our Sports Sunday Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations. Or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. All right, phone lines open for you, 402-413-2400. Also can fire some texts at us as well. We're back with more Sports Alley next. Husker fans, the 2023 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need your support celebrating the 100th year of Memorial Stadium. Purchase a special Husker football through these gates mini plan. For only $100, you will be at the Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech games, plus your choice of one home Big Ten game. Three games for only $100. Tickets available while supplies last. Purchase your through these gates mini plan today. For more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets. Go Big Red. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Woodhouse Ford is making car buying better with three convenient locations in Blair, Omaha, and Plattsmouth. A streamlined process and great offers going on now. Save up to $9,000 off MSRP on a new 2023 F-150 XLT Super Crew. Shop all of our inventory and savings now at woodhouseford.com. With approved credit, see dealer for details. Expires 5-31-2023. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. To win the game, you got to have more strength. You got to be tougher. You got to be reliable. You got to want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. We're back, Sports Highlight. Final few minutes of our number one. Thanks to Ben for giving us, I thought, just maybe we're going to do one segment, but uh, 
Went two segments with him. A lot to cover to wrap up the Husker baseball season. 402-413-2400. Let's go to the phones. Tom down in Kansas joined us. Good evening. Tom, how are you? Well, I'm a little gloomy, Sharpie. Yep, I hear you. I I really predicted uh, something really special coming out of this team because they can they can pitch at times and they can really hit at times. And we, to me, Greg, I this whole season was like a slippery sliding mess. Sometimes, you know, one thing would happen, and look a lot. A lot of bad things, a lot of weird things happened to him, too. I, I remember throwing the baseball. You know, me and Trent were playing baseball or catching. It was like the third call in a row that you had where a guy made a diving stupid catch against us, and I was like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> I mean, yep. it, it just was one of those seasons. I mean, do you understand where, uh, kind of where I'm going with that? I, I, I know you do because I can hear it in your voice when you're calling the game. It's head scratching. So this team lacked good luck. And to not walk off a team, Tom, in 57 games is almost statistically impossible. And the nights that they didn't pitch real well, they didn't hit real well. They just never got the stars to kind of align and let them go on a big run. And yet there were some marvelous moments over the last three months. Right. It, don't you agree? That, I'm sorry. And I might be, you know, a little biased because of how big a Husker fan I am. But this team was really good in a lot of ways. And uh, I just did I never thought that we, I would have to call in for the last, the end of the year show and be talking about this. I'd be like, Hey, let's I'm we're ready to rock and roll down to Texas or wherever we have to go for the regional. And I'm just uh, the whole weekend out, you know, we were out at the lake and I just, I could not wrap my hand or, head around it. And the question I have for you, maybe you can answer it real fast before you have to get off. I did not think this team did one thing spectacularly bad, but the one thing I do think by listening to the show and or listening to the broadcast, I really don't think they handled pressure well. And in Nebraska, it, a lot of college teams, their baseball teams, they don't have the weight of that state on them. And this is no excuse for anybody. But, I mean, they it looked like that when the pressure was on, they pressed so hard – you know, every every single one of them up and down the line, and I just I felt bad because I mean I could feel the pressure. I could feel the pressure rooting for them. Like, oh my God, we got to win this midweek game. We got to stop losing these, and we know what we're facing at the end of the year. And look what happened. So yeah, it's an issue. Hey, theory. it was great hearing the segment with you and Ben. I love listening to you guys. And we were talk- all of us Husker fans were out at the lake together listening to the thing, and we were like, there is nothing we'd rather be doing right now than listening to Sharpie and Ben on a baseball call. We loved it. We loved this season. I know it didn't turn out the way we wanted to, but I hope the guys, if they're listening, we love you all, and it was fun to follow it. Go Big Red. Tom, thank you. Appreciate the comments. We love doing it, and it's a it's a passion of all of ours. And you're right. I, I don't know if this team, if it's not handling pressure or something, they just didn't maybe bring intensity enough on those midweek games, and there was a letdown margin in there to lose to the Dakotas and the Omahas and Creightons when they had better talent than those teams, but they just did not get it done uh, game in and game out. And um, Will Bolt said they left five, six wins on the table, and that might have been enough to get them into a regional if that had happened. I don't have enough time for Greg and Grand Line. If you want to hang on, Greg, we'll get you right out of the gate next hour. If you want to call back in 10 minutes, that's fine as well. Next hour, we're going to talk some volleyball as well. Latest episode of Kicking Back with the Cooks, but we'll continue talking a little Husker baseball. We'll mix that in as well. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. 
Husker fans, mark your calendar for Sunday morning, July 16th to join the Nebraska football team in the race for a cure against pediatric brain cancer. It's the 11th annual Nebraska football road race. This year, all runners start and finish on Tom Osborne Field in Memorial Stadium. The final 69 yards will recreate the iconic 2013 SB play of the year when brain cancer patient Jack Hoffman scored a touchdown in the spring game. To register, go to huskers.com slash road race. Sponsored by the home agency with support from the Lincoln Track Club. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com.
Good evening, I'm Cole Hartman, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. On Sunday afternoon, Max Anderson and Will Walsh were named on the all-conference tournament team following the Big Ten baseball tournament up in Omaha last week. Max batted 444 in the tournament with a conference high eight hits in four games. In his four for five hitting performance against Michigan State on Friday, Anderson became the first player in college baseball to hit the 100 hit mark on the season. On the mound, Walsh tallied a 2-0 record through two, 10 and two thirds innings with a zero ERA, including a complete game, a four hit shutout against the Spartans. Walsh became the first Nebraska pitcher to throw that complete game shutout in a Big Ten tournament game. Keeping with the Diamond Sports, pitchers Jake Buns and CJ Hood have entered the transfer portal following the conclusion of the 2023 season. Late this afternoon, Nebraska Athletics announced that approximately 8,000 more tickets will go on sale to the general public regarding the August 30th Volleyball Day in Nebraska event in Memorial Stadium. Tickets will be available on Thursday, June 1st at 10 a.m. through the Nebraska Athletic Ticket Office. More information can be found on Huskers.com. On Sunday, Taylor Christopoulos of the Nebraska men's gym team helped Team USA secure a gold medal and grab a first place finish at the Pan American Championships in Columbia. Christopoulos finished with the highest vault score for Team USA and earned team points in several other events. Checking out a few live scores from Major League Baseball, the Marlins lead the Padres 3-1 in the fifth. The Rangers are ahead of the... Uh, the Orioles are way out in front of the Guardians, seven to nothing in the fourth. The Blue Jays lead the Rays six to two in the third, and the Reds are up on the Red Sox one to nothing in the third. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890Nebraska.com. Now get ready for hour two of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich, long count, turns, gives it off to Gabe Irvin, left side. Gabe stiff arms a man, is in the end zone for a touchdown off the left end. Good. That was a gold star stiff arm by 22 to 5 Pater. And the White extends their lead to 12 0. Two on the play clock. Mertz lifts the leg, gets his shotgun snap, back to throw, has some time, rolling out, steps, throws downfield. The pass is going to be intercepted. Malcolm Hartsog at the 45 to midfield, down the far sideline, inside the Badger 40 to the 38 yard line. Malcolm Welcome Hartsog's third pick of the year. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. We're back. Hour number two or our Tuesday night show. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. Call or fire off a text. Love to hear from you, Greg and Grand Island. I'm sorry I ran out of time last hour, but we'd love to hear from you if you want to dial us back up here in a couple of minutes. Pretty exciting. Nicole mentioned that they're going to sell some more tickets to the Nebraska Volleyball day coming up in late August. Uh, they're gonna they've opened up several thousand more tickets. 10 a.m. on Thursday. I know some of you are still wanting to get some of those tickets. Here you go. Uh, I think they've opened up some more space on the turf. Maybe they've shortened up the area for the concert. I'm not quite sure how they're doing all of that, but that's fantastic. So those of you that want to be a part of that, I think it's gonna be historic, people. I really do. I think they're gonna set the record for the highest attended. Uh, female sporting event in the United States history. I think we're going to do it in August. So uh, tickets again on sale again on Thursday, 10 a.m. at the Huskers ticket box office, huskers.com. You can get them off of there if you can't get here in person or their phone lines will be open that day as well. Also, remember, you have a chance to be a part of the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium in 2023 by purchasing a Through These Gates mini plan the three game ticket package they're on sale beginning tuesday at 10 and they're on sale right now huskers.com slash tickets or you can call the ticket office it's a hundred dollars you can get a ticket to both non-conference ga- home games northern illinois louisiana tech and then you pick a conference game uh you see so you pick between michigan northwestern purdue maryland or the iowa game so a three game mini plan seats are in the north and south end zones uh so there you go Hundred dollars, pretty good deal for three football games. So thirty-three dollars per game. That's a really, really good rate. Uh, while tickets are 
are uh, lasting. So that's a pretty cool deal they have there as well. All right, I wanted to clean up a couple of texts from last hour that I did not get to. We've got uh, Doug in Norfolk. Probably don't have the information handy, but when was the last time Nebraska had a pitcher drafted in the top 15 rounds? Doug, it was just two years ago as Kate Povich was drafted uh, by the Twins, then traded to the Orioles organization. He's in double A and doing great. Uh, And then that same year, I guess, yeah, you call him a pitcher, Spencer Swellenbach. He was a top 50 pick. Uh, So he was between rounds one and two. And he's now just pitching for the Braves. They immediately did some arm surgery on him, so he didn't pitch last summer. He's pitching now, and the last I checked, he's doing really, really well. So two guys off that team from two years ago were, I think Cade went in the third round. So Spencer went between, I think, that compensatory round between one and two, and then Cade went in the third. So there you go, just two guys right there from the last two years. Emmett, I think, is probably – Fifth or sixth round guy would be my guess for Emmett. Uh, the Major League Draft is coming up in July. So I think he'll definitely get drafted. And then obviously you got uh, Max and Bryce as well. Art in Los Angeles texted in and said that the BTN guys were comparing the body style of Max Anderson to Babe Ruth. Yeah, I guess I could see that a little bit. Um, who would Bryce Matthews compare to and by what a catch Bryce made in that one game last week. And there's no doubt Bryce made a running catch, running toward the foul pole, made an unbelievable running catch. I was talking to Scott Pose, who's one of the BTN broadcasters, former Major League Baseball player, and he said that catch probably earned Bryce some money because I don't think Bryce is not a shortstop in pro ball, maybe second base, but I really think he's an outfielder. I I think that's where he projects – and I think that catch probably showed his range. And you have some teams going, well, he can be a center fielder for us. So uh, wishing nothing but the best for those two guys. Even though they weren't seniors, their, their Husker careers are over. Uh, that is, that's going to be it for them. And they're going to be drafted and I, probably fairly high for both those guys. I think they'll both go before Emmett goes. But I do think Emmett is a, a top 10-round pick for the Huskers. Left-handed pitcher, throws that way. Emmett's body style they like. He's got some girth to him. He can hold up. He's been very durable in his Husker career. So all that working for, for Emmett in his favor. Uh, so wish nothing but the best for those guys. Corey North Platt says, hey, when you guys are calling the games and alternating innings, is there a reason the second guy rarely speaks? Is he snacking? It always seems strange that the guy not calling the game doesn't provide more color commentary. Yeah, Corey, it's by design. It's really the way I enjoy baseball. I think baseball is a sport, unlike football or basketball, that needs to breathe because the game, the pace of the game dictates that. Now, it's quickened now because of the pitch clock, but – and the other thing is, Ben and I aren't former college players or pro players or coaches. We're play-by-play guys. So we jump in when we need be, and I think when you see situations tighten up, we get in there. But I'm a firm believer in – letting the baseball broadcast breathe because, and I had a guy tell me today, he goes, you know what? And like, like Tom last hour said, they're sitting on a lake and the game's on. That's the beauty of baseball. You don't have to watch it. You can be doing other things. You're working in your garage, you're mowing your yard and you don't need constant chatter. In fact, it, it turns me off when I'm listening to a baseball broadcast, I'm hearing constant chatter. And I'll give you a, a great example of why I think that's really beneficial Lane Grindle, who was my partner before Ben, now is with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he said the way we had the Husker broadcast structured made his transition to Major League Baseball pretty seamless because he said that's exactly the way the Brewers want their broadcast to be as well. So there you go. So it's by design, Corey. Uh, I know it may not be for everybody, but it's kind of the design that we want, and uh, that's why we're – that's why we do it the way we do. Now, you know, do, do we also accept get up and go to the bathroom? Yeah, we do when it's not our innings. Do we also go get a Pepsi or something? Yeah, we do sometimes when it's not our innings. Uh, when you're sitting there day after day for three, four hours, you got to stretch your legs a little bit. I mean, that's just the way the sport is. And, and it's not the constant emotion and fight of a football broadcast that I have on a Saturdays in the fall where that's just a different deal. 
I mean, and, and I've got a great analyst in Damon Benny who knows how to break down those things. So uh, that, that's the point of it, and that's, that's why. I, I'm a big believer in baseball broadcasts need to breathe. And so that's why uh, we do that. All right, uh, more realignment talk. There's some big me- meetings going on this week. The SEC football coaches have gathered together. I think they're in Destin, Florida. They're debating in the SEC whether to go to nine conference games. Hello, that's what the rest of us have been doing for a long time. But the SEC, the mighty SEC, is stuck with eight. And then, you know, they get those little layup games that they schedule in November. Uh, yeah, they'll play one decent other game, but they get four non conference games. Big 10, we play three. Big 12, they play three. Pac 12, they played three. But the SEC's debating. They're debating, folks, whether to go to, oh, we're going to play a ninth conference game? Heck yeah, you should. So we'll see if they go with that uh, or not. Big 12 meetings start later in the week. And realignment talk is definitely in play. Dennis Dodds, CBSSports.com, uh, had a column up earlier today that said uh, that Colorado has had substantive talks with the Big 12 about coming back to that league. Remember, they left right around the time the Huskers left for the Big 10. They went to the back Pac-12. They are in strong talks to go back. There's been a lot of talk about the four corners, schools jumping from the Pac-12 to the Big 12. Those four corners would be Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado. But there's a lot of smoke around the Buffaloes making the jump back. They have fallen behind the Big 12. The Pac-12 has in financial dollars from the television contracts. And so um, with the instability of the Pac-12, and the Pac-12 just cannot get a new TV deal put together. Uh, and so it looks like uh, Colorado may be the first to pull the plug. There's been reports. We talked about it a week or two ago. Barry Trammell of the Oak Daily Oklahoman, the great paper in Oklahoma City, he had it on strong uh, strong sources that Colorado was ready to make the move. And Dennis Dodd today said that that, that uh, could happen sooner than later. So by the time we go to Boulder and play prime time on September the 9th, they might be, well, they might not, not next year, but they may have already made the announcement that they're a big 12 school. So a lot of things happening. These summer meetings take place. The Big Ten has kind of already gone through theirs. Not much really came out of the Big Ten's. Uh, other than trying to transition a new commissioner, who, by the way, I don't even know if Cole knows this, the new commissioner was in Omaha at the tournament for one day last week. I did not see him. I did put in a request to try to do an interview with him, maybe for we had a long pregame show on Friday night, but he was not, he was not meeting with reporters. He wanted to be on site, get a lay of the land, see how it was run, in Omaha. Omaha has one more year of their contract for the Big Ten tournament and then it goes open to bid. I, I just I can't I can't imagine that tournament being anywhere else and being supported the way it is in Omaha. And and absolutely Husker fans dominate. But did you did you flip it on Sunday for the Iowa Maryland game? There was over nine thousand in the stands for the Iowa Maryland game. So Iowa has wrapped their arms around coming to Omaha for that tournament. There's a lot of Hawkeye alums that live in the Omaha metro area. Obviously, you have Council Bluffs just on the other side of the river. But, I mean, we've had this thing in Target Field. We've had this thing in Columbus, Ohio, and nobody showed up. Nobody showed up. So I, I think it would be crazy. I, I don't know what's going to happen when the two L.A. schools come in. They're probably going to have to expand that tournament from eight teams to maybe ten. Uh, and that's not that far away. But um, I did put in a request to talk to the new commish. I was denied. So I tried, folks. I, I did. I tried to jump in there and, and, and get us, get us uh, in there. All right. Um, it's bu- going to be a busy summer for Husker teams traveling abroad. The soccer team has been in Iceland. I believe they're wrapping that trip up. They might even be on their way back. But they've had several matches over there. The basketball teams, both the men and women, are headed to Europe later on in the summer, late July, early August. And Husker Volleyball left last night out of Omaha for Brazil. They're going to play a series of matches. They're down there like 15 days. They don't get back till mid-June. Uh, but before they left, John and Lauren recorded another version of their podcast, Kicking Back with the Cooks. We're going to get into that in the next segment as well. But first, time to tell you that our Sports Sunday Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations 
or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. We're back with a little snippet of kicking back with the cooks. We'll do that next. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Ann Gallagher with Campus News. 26 Husker students presented research findings on nuclear deterrence to a panel of U.S. Strategic Command officials at STRATCOM headquarters in Bellevue. The student-led presentation was the culmination of a semester of STRATCOM-guided research and the latest in a years-long partnership between STRATCOM and the National Security Studies Program at Nebraska. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Woodhouse Chevy is making car buying better now with two convenient locations in Missouri Valley, Iowa and our newest location in Omaha at 112th and Dodge. Plus, going on now, receive 3.9% APR for 60 months on all in-stock 2023 Silverado 1500s when you finance with GM Financial. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy in Missouri Valley and now in Omaha. With approved credit, see dealer for details. Expires 5-31-2023. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. That's why we make trucks like Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight and counting. Made for performance and capability. Made to play hard and work smart on and off-road. That's because they're built Ford tough. So be future ready with Ford F-Series, based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. Here's an easy pill to swallow. Right now, earn a five cent fuel saver on every prescription you fill at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. That's five cents off per gallon of gas for each prescription filled at Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee makes it easy to fill your prescriptions. Just call or stop by your local Hy-Vee Pharmacy and let us handle the rest. You can also fill online or use the mobile app. Fill a prescription and start earning today. Some restrictions apply. See your pharmacy or hyvee.com for details. Hello, tomorrow. We may not know exactly what you've got in store for us, for our routines and our normals. But here's the thing. Turns out, we've got this. We haven't seen everything, but we have seen ourselves be more ready for whatever you bring than we thought we would be. So when it comes to tomorrow, bring on the day. First Interstate, built for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Visit us at firstinterstate.com. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. 
From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm sports media student Connor Clark with Campus News. Engineering professor Ronald Fowler has been named a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors, the highest professional honor among academic inventors. As director of UNL's Midwest Roadside Safety Facility, Fowler has played a key role in developing innovative roadside safety technologies that are used around the world. Fowler has earned eight U.S. patents and three foreign patents over his 35-year career. Back is Hunter Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Schott back with you. Jessica has the week off. Well-deserved vacation for her. Uh, so you're stuck with me for the next couple of nights. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to do a little spin around the conference, uh, wrap up our post-spring football practice with our last version of the Blitz until next fall. When we'll get it going for a weekly basis for that. I think tomorrow we're checking in on Michigan State, Iowa, and Indiana. So we'll have that for you tomorrow night on the program. Also, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And Jessica last week had a chance to catch up with Brett Haskell, who leads the uh, psychology department here at the University for the Athletics. And Matt Rule is going to sit in. They're going to talk about how important taking care of everybody's mental health is in sports and in particular, how the Oscar football teams. We'll have that conversation for you tomorrow night here on the program. Uh, John in Omaha, as I was talking about, kind of the style of broadcast we have for Husker baseball. He said, I love listening to your broadcasts. I love letting the game breathe. I like hearing the chatter in the stands, and you can feel the pace between pitches. Job well done. Love it, John in Omaha. And, and that's the point. I mean, I, just, I treat baseball differently than I do a football or a basketball broadcast. It just is. It's just a different pace to the sport. And, you know, I'm not, not, there's a, always more ways to skin a cat, right, than one. But for me, in my ears, this is why the broadcasts sound the way they do. And I'm, I'm glad that Corey North Pratt, Platt brought that up so I can kind of explain all that. The guys in the chat room tonight are debating the pitch clock. And some like it, some don't. I get that. I now that I've had a full season of it with Husker baseball, I like it. I didn't know if I would when the season began. It seemed rushed. It took, I think, Ben and I a little while to kind of adapt the pace of our broadcast to it. And I've talked to Lane about this as well. Uh, Lane Grindle, who used to host this show now, the one of the voices of the Milwaukee Brewers, he said, man, it's really been different. Because it, it even goes quicker, I think, in the major leagues than it does. But I like it. I think it has helped the pace of the game. I think it's I think it's better for viewing if you're there in person. I mean, you can sit there and you look up at your watch and for a 6.05 start and 7.15 and we're in the fifth inning, you're like, wow, okay, uh, I can make it to the end of the game. We had very few games that went over three hours this year. And I think that's better for the sport to keep it under three hours. I think it's going to draw in some younger folks uh, whose attention spans aren't as long maybe as those of us that – I've been around a little longer on this earth, uh, but I like it. And I think the players adapted to it. I think it made for better play up and down the line. So I, I think it's good. I, I, and I didn't know if I would like it or not, but now that I've experienced a full year, um, I do like it. I do know that I like Husker volleyball. And I love listening to John and Lauren's monthly podcast, Kicking Back with the Cooks. They have recorded another one before the volleyball team departed last night for Brazil for their two-week trip to play some foreign uh, teams and to get ready for their upcoming fall season. So tonight, we thought we would let you listen to a snippet of the full podcast where they talk about this upcoming trip down to Brazil. You mentioned you're leaving on May 29th. What does the flight plan look like? How long does it take you all to get down there? And where are you heading to first? Yeah, we're... Uh, uh, fly out of Omaha, we go uh, to Chicago, and then Chicago all-night all flight down to uh, Sao Paulo. We have about a six-hour layover in Sao Paulo, and then we fly to a city called Belo Horizonte. Belo Horizonte is a, another, it's a big city in Brazil, I believe it's a little bit south of Sao Paulo, and that's where we're going to spend the first week is in Belo Horizonte. The number one club team in Brazil, Club Minas, uh, that's where they're located, and we're going to play and train with them. Uh, what's interesting is Nancy 
Mendring, who's now Nancy Metcalf, who owns Scooter's Coffee, uh, sh all, all the coffee places. Uh, so uh, every once in a while, I get a free $10 little gift card to go to Scooter's. So I always pay it forward to somebody. And it's amazing how many times I've been in line at Scooter's and somebody pays it forward. So I just now do it all the time. But anyway, she played at Club Minas for a few years. Said it was a wonderful experience, great club. So it's been there a long time, very successful. They, their coach there is considered one of the best coaches in the world. So we're really looking forward to training and spending about a week there in Belo Horizonte and Club Minas. There's not a lot to do and see in Belo Horizonte. It's, uh, I think it's some agricultural areas. Uh, so it will be more of a training and a lot of playing volleyball. So what's the destination after that? So from there, we go fly to Rio. Uh, I think it's about an hour flight, and uh, in Rio we're going to go uh, stay down on one of the next to one of the I, I would call it tourist areas or, or or places where the people go to go to the beach, and we're actually staying at a Marriott there, so it'll be uh, something we're u a little more used to, and then from there we're going to play a few clubs in Rio, and then from there we we bus to uh, what's called Sacarema. And that's where the National Team Training Center is. And uh, we're going to train and play probably the U19 and the U21 Brazil teams, which are, you know, those are players the same age as our players that are preparing for the World Championships, which are in August and, and September. Now, many of our players would be eligible to go on that trip. And, and, but, you know, we start August 7th. We're playing matches August 23rd. So uh, there's no way we could have, you know, five of our players gone for a month uh, playing in the World Championship. So, and then everybody asked me, okay, well, why, why don't they do it in the summer when all the college players can go? Well, you got to remember, this is the World Championship. So this is the uh, International Volleyball, FIVB, making these decisions and setting these tournaments up. And they're doing it, I, I believe it's going to be in... Uh, actually, I'm not sure where it is. I, I heard Mexico, but I think it may have changed now and might be in Europe, a couple of different countries hosting it. So it's a big deal. And they're doing it on the international calendar, not on University of Nebraska or, or Division One NCAA volleyball calendar. And so uh, that's just something that's good for people to understand. And so we'll probably be, the USA will probably be sending a lot of high school players to go to that because college players will be with their college teams. And last I checked, we're paying their scholarships, so <laughs> priorities in Nebraska. Uh, so but anyway, we'll train there at their training center. And one thing we're gonna do there, Lauren, is uh, I, I hope people really will follow this, um, but next to the training center is a, is a very, uh, it's an area that has a lot of poverty uh, and we uh, asked Adidas to send down clothing, shoes, knee pads, cl uh, sh jerseys for 150 elementary school kids. And we're going to do a clinic with them and give them Adidas stuff. Uh, and and what, what's kind of interesting about this, I asked, you know, we were talking about what sizes do we need to order and they said you need use sizes because the poverty is so high, they just, these kids, a lot of them are really small uh, just from lack of nutrition and so on. So we're really excited about doing that uh, and trying to make a difference and have an impact on these kids and also an impact on our players about giving back and seeing, you know, not everybody gets to play in Nebraska volleyball and, and um, you know, some of the challenges that people in this world have every day. And do you head home after that last stop, or do you go some, somewhere else? Well, typically on our international trips, we take a couple days at the end to debrief. And if you remember our very first trip to China in 2000, I was trying to figure out where the heck, you know, again, that we were scrambling on that trip. It was still a very communist third world country at that time. and. You remember, you know, our camp camera got confiscated as we walked in the airport, so we were under tight surveillance the whole time. But I was trying to figure out a way, how do we debrief this trip and learn from it? And um, so 
we went to his, I found a spa, and we went to a spa and jacuzzi and got massage, and then we kind of sat around and talked about the trip and what we learned from it. And uh, so we've all, every trip, we've always tried to do something like that. So for this trip, we're going to go to a place, it's again, we can bus there, called Buzios. And Buzios, if you look it up, is an old, hundreds of years old fishing village. And it used to be a small little fishing village where the fishermen lived and they would go out and fish. Well, now they've kind of made it into a tourist resort, small town. And we're actually going to take a bo this boutique hotel. We're occupying the whole hotel. So, in fact, they're bringing in extra beds because they didn't have enough rooms for everybody. So we're going to slumber party a little bit. And... Uh, and we're going to spend a couple days there. It's, a little, it's got little tourist things, little shops, little cool restaurants, coffee houses, things like that. And then a really cool beach so they can, they can canoe, kayak. I think they can surf so they can do water activities. And, uh, and then that's where we'll debrief the trip and then uh, fly home from there. And where you mentioned you're staying at a Marriott and then this boutique hotel. Where else are you staying in some of the other locations? Or is it dorms? Is it hotels? It's all hotels. Uh, in uh, Sacarema, we're staying in a hotel there. Uh, and then in, in Belo Horizonte, we're staying in it's a Brazilian hotel. Uh, so, I mean, these are big cities. You know, you, you think the Lincoln, Nebraska. I mean, these are, I mean, Sao Paulo was 15 million, one of the biggest cities in the world. Belo Horizonte, I think, is three or four million. I, I could be off on that. And then Rio is a huge city. So, we're staying in more of the modern type hotels. Uh, and But that's why we're going to. Uh, Buzios is it's going to be this little boutique it's, it's really cute you know I had Kelly check all this out and and you know like they have like breakfast they have like a little you know bakery things and cheese and bread and stuff like that it's just like a charcuterie board so it, it'll be it'll be a cool little experience and a, and a way to uh, unwind the trip I wish I got to go to Brazil because you know China and Japan you're eating and rats are running around on the floor. Yeah, that's true. And you don't get bread and cheese. You get, you know, fish and rice and vegetables and yeah. not some of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't that tough, Lauren. Oh, it was. And we had also had to stay in dorms. We didn't get yeah. nice five-star hotels. That's true. We, we dormed it in China. So. Yeah. You're, uh, you're getting soft. Softer every year. Uh, some fans have been reaching out on Twitter. Will any of this be live streamed? Can anyone watch? Is, is there any way to keep up on, on some of these scrimmages and how you guys are doing? Yeah, we'll be sending a video back and social media stuff back from Brazil daily. Uh, I, there's a chance that some of these could be televised or streamed. Uh, we've talked about it. Now, I don't want to make promises, but I think there's going to be an attempt to try to stream some stuff. So. People are just going to have to follow on uh, the social media platform, Rasa Volleyball and, and um, Huskers.com, and, and just kind of follow and see what happens. As you know, on a lot of these international trips, everything is changing all the time. So uh, we kind of have a set schedule, but every day pretty much something's going to change or adjust. Or, uh, but we will be playing. I know they like to play at night. So, uh, and there, I believe Brazil is two hours, or where we're going is two hours ahead of Nebraska time. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff we'll do will be at night, uh, competition-wise. Are there any other activities that you'll be doing outside of volleyball training um, besides the ones that you mentioned? Is there any other, like, tourist attractions or activities that you, get, you guys will be partaking in? Well, we're going to go to a couple cool restaurants. Uh, this one restaurant is... Uh, considered it's won all kinds of awards and everything so we're gonna go there that's gonna kind of be our splurge night uh, but it's a uh, like a five-star Brazilian restaurant so that'll be one thing we're gonna do you gotta remember is you can't you gotta be careful there I mean there the security is it's it's not a super safe place and there's you have the you know the tourists but then you also have the poor people and I mean there's uh, you know, so there's a lot of crime there, and we got to be really careful. Uh, but the one we are going to take, the one big thing is you go up to Christ the Redeemer, which is the big uh, Christ 
uh, uh, statue way up on top of this mountain and you wind up and go up on this bus and wind up there and go up there and oversee all of Rio and uh, that's one of the big tourist things to do. That's one thing in Brazil there's not a lot to do. Uh, the other big thing obviously would be going to the rainforest but it was too expensive, too far to get there and there's a lot of risk with uh, diseases in the in the rainforest and we just didn't want to take those chances so uh, that's why we're staying where we're at but the big tourist thing will be Christ the Redeemer and it's a volleyball trip and then experience in Brazilian culture I mean Brazilians love to have fun they love to party they love to eat and they love their food and uh, and so we'll do some of that and then of course Buzios is a is kind of a little tourist resort area so there'll be some fun things to do there Last, so you mentioned you're going to do the last day or wrap up the trip in Buzios. Will you be naming captains? That is the plan as of now. Typically on these trips, when we debrief, we talk about the future, where we want to go, and, and who can help get us there. And so that might be something that uh, hopefully uh, unfolds on this trip and becomes pretty clear to the team you know, who our leaders are. Do you, as you know, there's great opportunities on these trips. Right. To, uh, you can pout, you can be a grump, or you can uh, embrace it and, and, you know, take charge. And because uh, it's, you know, we, we go longer than most teams go. We're, we're going, what, May 29th, back June 14th. So it's like 16 days. And uh, so it's, it becomes a long trip. It's hard. And, and uh, uh, so, you see that you you kind of can't hide for 16 days. You can't fake it. Do you so. guys have to get any vaccines? Yeah, the one vaccine we have to get is yellow fever. Okay. Uh, and um, I, ironically, I was just talking to a, a coaching friend of mine who went to Costa Rica and got uh, another type of fever down there and says as sick as sick as he's ever been in his life. So uh, that's one thing we're going to protect for us. It's even though it's going from summer to winter down there, we're you know they're opposite. Uh, Lauren, if you remember from geography, we're in the northern hemisphere; they're in the southern hemisphere. So the Earth tilts, and so it's becoming winter there. But it's still you know it's warm, uh, but we still got to be careful m with mosquitoes. If, back to captains, are you? Do the coaches vote on captains nowadays, or does the team vote on captains? Uh, it just varies. Every year we, we do it different. It just depends on the group and what we feel. And, and uh, But we've been doing leadership classes all spring. And, and we've said, whoever's interested in being a leader, you're welcome to come to these classes. I, I'll call them classes. They're just, you know, we, we, we've brought in speakers. We've done exercises. We've talked about leadership. So far, all 14 players have been in every one. So I guess they're all interested in being leaders. There you go. That's part of the latest episode of Kicking Back with the Cooks. The full podcast is up where you find your podcast. You can get to it off of Huskers.com or on the Huskers Radio Network page and find the latest full-blown version. That's about half of it right there. They covered some other topics in there as well, but really wanted to get in about the trip and what's going to be going on. They are going to live stream some of these matches that they play, so stay tuned for information about that. Keep checking Huskers.com for some links. So that I think their first game is Thursday, I want to say. So two days from now, they got to get acclimated down there to uh, uh, to that. It's almost the same time zone because it's just straight south of here. But this is different for them. They've been to China a couple of times. First time they've gone to Brazil. But um, I think this is a wise choice by the coach. And, man, he's right. 16-day trip. That's a long time to be down there. But we'll keep monitoring how they're uh, doing down there. A lot of new faces and some really, really talented true freshmen that have entered the program. Uh, if you went and saw their... Uh, exhibition match against Wichita State in Central City a few weeks ago, you know that's a really talented volleyball team. Hey, buckle up, put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're going to reopen the phone lines for you, 402-413-2400. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, back to, with more of the show next. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. University of Nebraska leadership has launched a $3 billion fundraising campaign to support education access for Nebraska students. The Only in Nebraska campaign 
the largest in university history, will focus on creating scholarships to make education more affordable, attracting more Nebraska students, and keeping young people in the state after graduation. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Visit Woodhouse Nissan for all your Nissan needs. Whether you're looking to purchase, lease, or finance your next vehicle, our team offers a personalized shopping experience. Right now, lease a new 2023 Rogue SV all-wheel drive for $385 a month, 436 months, and 5,000 miles per year. Visit one of our two convenient Woodhouse Nissan locations today. With approved credit, tax title, and license extra, discounted price based on sale price of $31,865 minus $600 NMAC cash rebate. VIN number PC 767330. Expires 531.23. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, see why 2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so hot. The air conditioner is out again. SOS, he screams and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest 
premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Greg Sharp with you. Jessica's got the week off. 402-413-2400. Let's get to the phones. Debbie in Grand Island's up next. Good evening, Debbie. Good evening. And Greg, thank you so much for taking time to do some um, information on mental health. Um, that is so critical with regard to our athletes. I know they're in 100% prime state most of the time, and whether it's what they eat, what they drink, what they are physically capable of doing, but there still comes a time that we have to really look at that as an element for everybody, not only at the university, but in the society as a whole. And I am so thankful for you guys looking in on that and looking forward to that program. But most of all, thank you for just everything going. I mean, after the big weekend, and uh, of course, I love volleyball. I grew up on that. It's the only sport I knew except for a little bit of roping and cowboying and you know, barrel <laughs> racing like this. I can see where the coach is getting really his blood into the rodeo situation right now. It's just impossible to not not get involved with that. But thank you again for all that you do and, and spread all this news to Nebraska. We appreciate it so much out here. You're very we welcome. Do. Debbie, thank you so much for calling in. And Debbie was referencing where tomorrow night we're going to have Brett Haskell, who heads the psychology department for Husker Athletics. Uh, she and Jessica and Matt Rural sat down last week to talk about things as, as the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're going to have a, a full-blown segment on that tomorrow night here on the program. Looking forward to having it and bringing that to you tomorrow night here on the program. The conference today did announce or the, the one of their television partners, NBC. Remember, NBC now going to televise Big Ten sports starting in the fall they have announced their September schedule. We knew they're going to open on September the 2nd in primetime, 6.30 Central, West Virginia at Penn State. Pretty good little matchup. But it kind of goes downhill from there, honestly. The next week, Charlotte at Maryland. Charlotte was horrible last year. Maryland's going to be okay. but that was, And that's the day Nebraska's in Boulder. If you go look at the Big Ten schedules, that September the 9th weekend, all the really good – Big Ten games, we're on the road. And so we're in the other team's television package. Uh, so there you go. Charlotte at Maryland in prime time on NBC. Yikes. And then September 16th, it's Syracuse at Purdue. That's decent. That's a decent little matchup. Uh, and then they have announced already that it's Iowa Penn State to wrap up the month. But my goodness, week two, Charlotte at Maryland in prime time on NBC. Phew. That isn't going to do much for the old. Uh, the ratings book, but that uh, did come out today. We think we're going to get some kickoff times for the Huskers before the week is over. Okay, let's go. I'm ready for a couple of these. I know people who have big events, maybe a wedding, something going on in the fall. They want some kickoff times. I think we're going to get those by the end of the week. Don't hold me to that, though. I need to take our final break, 402-413-2400. Still time if you want to join us with a comment or question on the phone or fire off a text. We're back to a wrap-up Tuesday show next. Husker fans, the 2023 Nebraska football season is right around the corner, and we need your support celebrating the 100th year of Memorial Stadium. Purchase a special Husker football through these gates mini plan. For only $100, you will be at the Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech games, plus your choice of one home Big Ten game. Three games for only $100. Tickets available while supplies last. Purchase your through these gates mini plan today. For more information, visit huskers.com slash tickets. Go Big Red. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision-making you expect from a family-owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Final few minutes, Sports Island here on a Tuesday night. Again, hope everybody had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Hope you got rested, relaxed. Hope you had a chance maybe to go uh, think about uh, people that have given their lives for the uh, for those of us to enjoy the freedoms that we have here in this country. I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends, uh, went out and decorated some graves over the weekend. Uh, all right, tomorrow is the last day of the month. It's also the deadline for basketball players to take their name out of the NBA draft hopper, and come back to college. That includes Casey. Casey today had a, a workout with the Pacers. And I, I think it might have been the only really one-on-one workout he had. The Pacers have like five picks in the two-round draft. My gut still says he's coming back, but we'll know that tomorrow. We hope we, we should know that tomorrow night when we go on the air for the program. I think all signs are pointing that he wanted to get an evaluation, be told what he needs to work on, what, what has to get better if he's going to be an NBA player because that's what he wants. That's his goal. He wants to play in the, in the association. And so, but I know the Huskers and Oscar fans want Casey back for one more year. Uh, so we should know tomorrow. The deadline is tomorrow night, but hopefully Casey doesn't make his wait all that long and we get word when we're on the air tomorrow night. So we'll uh, monitor that uh, for you all uh, tomorrow night on the program. How about the NBA Finals? Boston was a no-show last night in that game seven. The Heat just absolutely picked them apart. If you had the Heat, if you if you did a bracket, uh, I don't know many people that do, but if you picked the Heat two months ago to be in the NBA Finals, good for you because that's an eight seed making it all the way to the NBA Finals. They're going to lose. The Nuggets are going to win the championship, and they might sweep them. I mean, they just swept the Lakers. Now, they won't sweep them because Jimmy Buckets will have a big game and Miami will get a game, maybe get two, but the Nuggets are going to win this thing, and I'm happy for that. I think the Nuggets are a fun team to watch. It's a franchise that has never been in the NBA Finals. I think it's great. Uh, Denver's had a good little run here, right? The Avs won the Stanley Cup a year ago, and I think the Nuggets are going to get it done. That championship series starts on Thursday night. But last night, oh boy, Boston, that was bad. Really probably could have ended the game before. They got that late tip in to stay alive. Uh, but it should be a good uh, good championship series. College Softball World Series starts on Thursday as well. As I mentioned earlier in the program, pretty chalky. Not many upsets. Really, had just UCLA got bounced, and that allowed Utah to get in there with a 15 seed, but uh, pretty chalky uh, in Chief College World Series field in softball. Will baseball follow suit? Well, we're fixing to find out in the coming weeks. Thanks to Cole for steering the ship. Thanks to all of you for listening. We're back here again tomorrow night. Have yourself a great night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. 
Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring. And exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. 